Okay, so wanting to talk a bit about um, shape, you know, like like silhouette actually, and you know how to operate the uh, the brush. And I know it sounds kind of ridiculous. People say, "How do you operate a brush?" Well, you, you hold it in your hand and you mash it around. No, <laughs> no it's not quite like that. Um, uh, like when you want to operate a brush. Okay, here, let's let's get to this view here finally, and let's move this camera out of my way. Okay. When you want to operate a brush, you're going to find that, um, let's take for instance, okay, I, I was talking about drawing, right, and let me just go and draw a cube. Okay. Now you'll notice there's, there's a, a very sort of distinct way that I'm moving around using this. You'll see that I'm always putting these little dots down and working point to point. And the reason why is, the reason I always hit these two dots is because well, I, I'm I'm not very coordinated. <laughs> we aren't very coordinated, man. We're we're machines made it out of meat. Okay, we're just we're not very coordinated, and so we're not very accurate. So here's what a lot of people do: is I I I always see beginners always you know throwing lines down, throwing lines down like that, and you know to get out of that, to get any kind of accuracy, you can either you know move your mouse back and forth like this, or, or move your stylus back and forth like that. And back and forth. And the, the reason you put it back and forth is so that you can see what kind of line you're going to draw. You know, if I need to draw a circle, you know, then I can move around and around in a circle like this, and I can kind of see the shape it makes. In fact, here, let me uh, turn this thing on. Uh, here we go. Let's turn that up even more. Uh, I think it's this button. Yeah, here we go. Okay. So you can see that, that, that kind of a, a light red line. So I've just got kind of a tracing thing here. So as I move around, you know, you can see the shape that is being made. So you can actually, you can really control where you want that line. And the only, the, the only thing I'm doing right now is I'm, is I'm hovering the stylus, right? I, I'm not applying any pressure, right? When I want the line, when I have the line that I want, like, like if, if I see it on this box, right, I can see, oh, I want a line that's kind of midway down there. And I can, I can create another edge like that. You know, it's when you move your stylus up and down, you're you're basically drawing without drawing. You're drawing without you know actually applying that line there. So you get you know a good degree of accuracy you know that way. So that's that's why you know you need to move your stylus around. Um, or here I'll let's switch back to the other camera. Okay, and here you'll see the way that I'm moving. I'm not I'm not you know. I'm not doing this. I'm not moving my wrist. Like, like I'm not just sitting here anchoring my wrist and then doing this. I'm moving my whole arm. The reason why is because the hand's a blind spot. Can you see anything? No, you can't. You can't see through your hand. It's like going to a movie theater and there's like a, a, a big fat guy, you know, like standing in front of you and, you know, standing up in the middle of the, of the theater. And you can't just see, you just can't see, see past him. He doesn't even have to be fat. It can be just anyone standing up in the theater. You know, if he's, if he's blocking your point of view, your illusion goes away. You can't, you can't paint. You just it doesn't work. You got to move your hand. Move your whole hand. In fact, right now I'm most of my movement is in my shoulder and in my elbow. And so that way, you know, I can make much larger, you know, I can I can make much larger movement. So if I put a dot down there, put a dot here. Now here's the other thing when I'm doing this dot to dot stuff. Okay, what you notice how quick like like look at the accuracy I can get, man. I can get I can pretty much hit those dots every single time. You know, so when I apply the actual pressure to the the, the, the stroke, you know, I can get the line right on. All right, that's why, because the 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 body, the muscle memory, it's short term muscle memory. Your short term muscle memory is good at returning to the same point every single time. You know, you get a tactile feeling for it. You get comfortable with hitting that same point. That's why you make the points. The other reason why you make points is because these things act as markers. You can see that if I want a, you know, a point in space there, you know, I can see an invisible line between that point and where my stylus is. So I, you know, I, I don't know if I can get this. Uh... Yeah, it's too bad I can't get a, a line to show up, but oh well, it's, it's too bad. Yeah, you can't see it. That's too bad. Uh, maybe if I restart this thing here. Do, do, do and
Okay, here we are. Yeah, can you see that little line there? There's that line. Now you can see this this little whitish line. And all it is is just one. If you put down one point like that, now you you know you can look at where the look at where the mouse cursor is, or at least where my pen is. You can see you know this line, you know, and you can always return back to that spot. That's you know that's the reason why you put down points is so that you know you can see kind of an invisible line between here and here. In this case, I'm just I'm making it visible. So you you know you got to work point to point, dot to dot. And in regards to silhouette, I said that this thing was going to be about silhouette, so let's let's do silhouette. You know, if I do, if I make you know these these four lines here, well, essentially I've I've made a silhouette. You know, I can let me do a box series. Let's get this thing to come around. Okay, maybe not even a box, a series of square planes. Let's switch back to the uh, other camera. All right, so series of square planes, even if it's two of them, and you'll see that I'm aligning the edges, right? I got to align the edges, and I'm link. I'm linking those corners. I'm gonna link my corners so that I get a nice flow to this. Okay. Only difference between drawing and painting is that drawing is a part of painting. It's the part of painting that deals entirely with shape and perspective. It's not they're they're not different, you know. Drawing is, is a you know it's not it's not like oh I do it did a drawing oh I did a painting no it's just a drawing is an incomplete painting it's like the very very first step of painting. So you know you can just by the the shape alone you know you can you can see that here hang on let me uh, switch to my cutting tool. Uh, hang on a second here. I got some. Okay, here we are. So, um, yeah, working with shape here. You know, if I want, I'm going to just lay down a big blob. You know, the blob is to tell me how big the thing is going to be. You know, on the canvas. Now I can start erasing. I wonder why it's not a. Oh, I got a paper texture active. That's why. Okay, let's turn off the paper texture. All right. I can cut that out, cut that away, and it already looks like it's. There's another part. You know, as you cut away the edges, you know the thing starts to look dimensional. That's that's really all there is to it. You know, you just you start to see it. So now that I've gone and I've cut up this object, um, let me just lock the uh, the alpha channel. Okay, and so now that the alpha channel is locked, I can take my my brush. You know, and the next part is, oh, let's add value. No, no, no. It's not. It's not. Let's add value. It's let's break the shape up into more shapes. There. That is just another shape of a different color, right? I mean, it, it, it's important that that shape looks like that. If I go in and I change the silhouette of this shape, you know, I'm putting a shape within a shape. Now I've, I've, I've changed. You know, this the surface. The surface has become. You know this corner has now dented in, and by doing that, you know by by pushing that down, it's almost like I've I've suggested that there's a, a slope here, and it, you know, it implies that we want another shape. You know, when you do one thing, it it, you know, when, once you make one change to the surface, there it's implying that you know this needs to happen. Now I've carved that in there. Now why is this thing not? Oh, because I'm not painting with pure black. That's why. Okay, here we are. Right. So I mean, that's that's all there is to it. You know, it's it's just you change to the shape, and it's going to demand a different value. So shape dictates value, meaning that you know if you don't have your shape in there, you can't figure out what values to put down. Your shape drives your value. Let's turn drawing on. Okay, here we are. So, oh right, it's because I got my alpha channel lock. There we are. So you know, I'm just going in and taking this one color. In fact, here I'm going to try now that I've dented that in here. Let me try etching a groove into this. So this is 
this is the drawing part, you know, right? Every painting starts with a drawing. I'm going to draw a groove. In fact, I could tell, look at that. That, 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 that groove's not like a 90 degree notch. It's, it's, it's kind of, you know, bent towards. You just see. You just have to see. Okay. So I cut that notch in there, right? And I've got the shape defined. Now I have to figure out, you know, what values I'm going to put in there. You know, what values are correct to make that look like that actually is sinking in. Right? So that's... I think you need your shape like that. So it's it's like clay. Okay, well, painting is like is just like sculpting. It's a kind of sculpting with an inf you're a sculptor with an infinite supply of clay. That's what you are. You know, you 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 can't run out of clay when you're painting. But you got to know how to work the clay. You got to know how to Oh, you know, now that I've cut that notch, well, look, there's something wrong here. Okay? This when when you look at this edge here, it's implying that there's like a flat piece of you know black construction paper here that's blocking that off but no i want this notch how far down should this notch go i don't know so i'm going to draw i'm going to draw the notch on i'm going to start chopping it out like a, like a little pair of scissors i'm going to cut a hole through there and now i'm going to i'm going to grab this color here with the eyedropper and start filling that in like that see now you can see inside but you know, just common sense is going to tell me that, you know, I think there's going to be a bit of a shadow cast in there. Oh, and now look at the bottom. Okay, the bottom of this little plane here, we need, you know, we need to shine some light on there. You know, we need to make that come out there. In fact, I think that looks a little too, that looks a little too bright. So you're always using your perceptions. You're always sensing, you know, whether things are right or, or wrong. It's just, yeah, maybe that looks a little dark, you know, a little bit darker. There, that's much better. Okay. Now, you know, I'm looking at the side wall. I'm thinking it's way too dark. The shape's right, but the value's wrong. Okay, so, you know, it's just it's too dark. But I like the shape of you know that shape. So, it's just a matter of you know uh, brightening this up is a matter of well, let's take the lighter color. And you got a bunch of tools. Okay, you can, you know, I could use the cutter again. So I can use the, the, the cutter and I can start, you know, cutting this shape on here. But look, I throw that down. I'm like, the value's too strong. It's too bright. I got to use something darker. Let's try this one. I don't know. It's closer, but I still think it's too bright. The reason why is because when I look at this, you know, it almost feels like, I've gone and I've carved out. Um, it feels like I've gone and I've carved out, you know, like a, a kind of a an object like that, right? It looks like I've, I've I've taken a piece out. It's still too bright. So let me try an even darker color. So that that's what happens when you're painting. You know, you just have to you have to test your colors out. Okay, that's a little better. Now, we're seeing this kind of that same kind of pulling up lip effect. So it's just a matter of having to apply it to everything. If you apply the same color to everything, what happens? It flattens out. Flat is when there's no contrast. You get take, I'm just purposely getting rid of the contrast that doesn't belong there. Oh, isn't that better? Right now you can see here, right? It's like the shape is wrong. So let's, let's fix that shape up. There, there, there. Okay. There we go. And that looks about right now. All of this stuff, you know, it's it's just you're working with silhouette. I can take I can take any any shape I want. Blah 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 blah. Okay. And then I'm gonna just say, well, I want the lighting from over here. Here's another thing is, is that positioning of specular highlights can really do a lot to tell you about form. You can do a lot to tell you, you know, where's the light falling. That's 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 the important thing is that you know specular highlights will really tell you where the light is. So this is basically telling me that you know if I had a sphere like this, and since there's a highlight over there, you know, the lighting is coming from 
you know, this direction. That's where the light's coming from. Now I can sense that the light's moving. If I want, I can make it so that, let's say, let's put the light source over here. Let's put a big glowing ball here. You know, and so you're going to find that, that this is... Well, maybe that would be a lot bigger. And maybe this won't be a lot bigger because the ball is so close. Right there. So the specular highlights shift depending on where your light source is. All right, now, here, I'm just going to go and light that up. And light that up. And light that one up. Okay, this is how you apply the values on top of your silhouette. So your silhouette always going to be the most important thing even more than any than your values. Your values must go on top of the silhouette. So learn to draw first. Learn to draw first. Deal with your shapes first. Then you can start dealing with value. You know, but that's only when you know where your light source is.